Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the hosts of CPE, Secretary of State John Kerry and the People's Republic of China Vice Premier Leon Yindong. Good afternoon. I'm Evan Ryan, the Assistant Secretary for the Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs. We will begin with the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding for the continuation of the CPE, which demonstrates the commitment of both the U.S. and Chinese governments to continue the CPE in the years to come. I want to personally thank Vice Minister Hao Ping, the working groups, and the pillar co-leads for their hard work in the meetings today. The people of both of our nations will reap the benefits of your dedication. Please let me take this moment to focus on a few of the outcomes of your work in each of the five pillars. Education, culture, women, science and technology, and sports. First, the education pillar would like to highlight our agreement to expand opportunities for students and scholar exchange under the Binational Fulbright Program and thank the Government of China for its increased contribution. We joined the Peace Corps in celebrating the 20th anniversary of the U.S.-China Friendship Volunteers and congratulate our Department of Education and your ministry on extending joint work through the newly signed Memorandum of Cooperation on Education. We applaud our state and provincial leaders for their cooperative work together on K-12 education and thank the universities and colleges in both of our countries for the partnerships they are undertaking. We also appreciate the contributions of the 100,000 Strong Foundation and private programs like the Schwartzman Scholars. They share our goals for increased study abroad by Americans. We are pleased that the Confucius Institutes in the United States allow Americans to study Mandarin with native speakers. We hope that more students in China will be afforded the same opportunity to learn about U.S. culture and language through the many cultural and academic programs sponsored by the U.S. government, universities, and private organizations. We would like to see similar American cultural centers on Chinese campuses creating strong symmetry. Second, the culture pillar has decided upon several deliverables in the next year that will broaden understanding of each other's societies. History and culture through the arts and arts-based people-to-people exchanges will be their focus. The State Department is pleased to host programs in China through American Music Abroad, the American Film Showcase, and a youth leadership program for Chinese students, focusing on civic education and leadership, but also exploring a sense of community through the arts and cultural programs. 
our government colleagues at the Smithsonian Institution will feature China at the Folklife Festival in 2014. We applaud our American private sector partners that have independently made strides to promote cross-cultural understanding, such as New York University Asian Pacific American Institute and the American Alliance of Museums, which are building intercultural professional networks. Other partners who are bringing Chinese culture to the United States include Goldman Sachs, having hosted the China National Orchestra in the U.S., and the Children's Museum of Indianapolis 2014 exhibit that will teach American youth about China's rich cultural heritage and contemporary life. We are pleased that the Terra Foundation of American Art will continue to build bridges of understanding through scholarly programs and exhibitions in China. And we continue to encourage and support the work of our 2012 de de delegation members in their projects and exhibits. Third, the Women's Pillar has decided that the China's Women's University and the Woodrow Wilson Center's Women in Public Service Project in China will work together over the next two years to organize three training workshops for emerging women leaders throughout China. The U.S.-China Women's Leadership Exchange and Dialogue, Women Lead, concluded its fifth conference in August of 2013, bringing together women scientists, academics, engineers, entrepreneurs, and government leaders to share ideas on women and science, technology, engineering, and math. In order to continue the discussion, they are making plans to send U.S. and Chinese delegations of women leaders to engage with their counterparts. Fourth, the Science and Technology Pillar will continue the Young Scientist Forum with two more meetings in fiscal year 2014 to take place in Beijing and Washington, D.C. Nearly 200 young scientists from the U.S. and China have already participated in the forum, embracing and enhancing mutual understanding through discussions not only about scientific research, but also professional development. This next year, the Young Scientist Forum will work to include more women in science. Finally, it gives me great pleasure to highlight the sports pillar outcomes. To confront the rising trend of childhood ob obesity, Nike and the General Administration of Sport of China have agreed to focus on promoting health and fitness through innovative access to sports programming. Additionally, representatives of the China Disabled Persons Federation and their U.S. counterparts have now established a mechanism of regular exchanges and visits among the Chinese Paralympic Committee, the U.S. Paralympic Committee, the U.S. Deaf Sports Federation, as well as between Special Olympics China and Special Olympics USA. We hope this will lead to continued cooperation on inclusion of people with disabilities in sports. All of these outcomes demonstrate the important work between our two governments. Thank you for your dedication to bringing the people of our countries closer. Now, I would like to invite Vice Minister for Education, Hao Ping, to give his report on today's working groups. Your Excellency Vice Premier Liu Yandong, Honorable Secretary Kerry, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I fully agree with what Assistant Secretary Raya has reported. The working teams of China and the United States, after a whole morning's active discussions, have reached over 70 outcomes. We have both agreed that China-U.S. people-to-people exchange is a course oriented to the future and for the youth. And now, according to our division of work, I will make a report about our consultation in education and sports. Under the theme of youth and innovation in education, we have reached agreement on the following. First, strengthen policy exchanges between the Ministry of Education of China and the U.S. Department of Education. Second, deepen provincial state education and people-to-people -people 
exchange and cooperation. Third, continue to implement such major education exchange and cooperation programs, including the three 10,000 programs of the Chinese side and the 100,000 Strong Initiative and the Fulbright program of the US side. Fourth, continue to support high-level education exchange and cooperation programs at multiple tiers and in multiple forms of China and the United States. Fifth, promote healthy development of the Chinese language in the United States. In addition, we have also signed an MOU of cooperation for the next four years to plan for the institutional dialogue and cooperation between us. In sports, we will carry out cooperation in the following areas. First, jointly sponsor the China-US sports seminar. Second, continue to carry out youth sports exchanges and sports cooperation for people with disabilities. Third, promote wushu and health qigong in the United States. Fourth, continue our cooperation in such sports as basketball, baseball, and volleyball. Fifth, engage in cooperation in innovative sports marketing. We believe that with the great importance attached by our leaders and outstanding leadership of the co-chairs, this meeting will be a full success, making fresh contribution to the vibrant development of China-US people-to-people exchange. At last, I wish to take this opportunity to extend on behalf of the Chinese team Sincere appreciation and thanks to my colleague Assistant Secretary Ryan and the U.S. team for the great deal of effective work they have done. Such is my briefing. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Minister. We are very grateful for your collaboration. Now, please join me in welcoming Ma Jing, director of CCTV America. She will address how CCTV sees itself as a bridge between the US and China to promote knowledge and understanding. Thank you, Assistant Secretary. Sun Jing, the Liu Fu Zongli. Secretary Kerry, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great day. Since moving from Beijing to Washington about two years ago, I've been engaged in a remarkable project, leading 150 journalists from US, China, and all around the world in building China's first ever television programming effort in the United States. In two years, we have created a truly international production center. We have two missions, to provide American content for the Chinese audiences and to offer American audiences a Chinese perspective. Through this process, we have created a unique opportunity for two peoples, two cultures to work together. Please take a look. Hold on there for me, three. CCTV America launched in February of 2011 from a state-of-the-art broadcast center in Washington, D.C. Let's uh, roll with this. All right. Three, two, one. The network brought together an international team of veteran journalists and technicians to report on the biggest headlines from around the world. Intense clashes are now underway. And go beyond the sound bites to tell compelling human stories. <laughs> CCTV America is a bridge, a bridge between people and cultures. By showing each side of an issue, by offering fresh, unique perspectives, we increase understanding and knowledge. I think the best way people can work together from around the world, and I think we're doing that, is to share our ideas and be willing to admit that we might not have the total picture. I think in the past two years, by learning from each other, we have achieved together what we could not have accomplished if we were all on our own. We're like the United Nations, you know, it's when you have a divergence of views and different perspectives, then we're that much richer from it. Aside from the language, aside from the way you express yourself, but we share the same concerns, we have the same worries and happiness in life. I love working here. Every day is 
every day is a challenge, but every day I think is a new opportunity to learn more. I can't believe how much I've learned here. Like Lindsay, I too cannot believe how much I've learned in such a short time. I remember the first thing I learned about my American colleagues was how impatient they could be. <laughs> and I guess the first thing they learned about me was how slow I could be to respond. Uh, I remember in the beginning, some of my uh, American senior producers would come to me with uh, problems and concerns. I would usually just listen and respond with, OK. They walked out of my office feeling more frustrated. What on earth is she really thinking? As Americans, they naturally wanted action and expected instant solutions. As Chinese, uh, I thought that we should think three times before we speak or act. So over time, we learned how different our two cultures' strength can be. The famous uh, American openness, innovation, and energy. The Chinese, great patience, hard work, and resilience. Still, we came to realize how much we could learn from each other and complement each other in achieving common goals. Actually, it is in those differences that lies a common strength. So this is how important people-to-people -people exchange, exchanges are. Uh, for uh, people from CCTV, we're experiencing it every day. And for beyond governments, we believe, for beyond governments, people, Chinese, American, and others can work together, no matter how different we are. At CCTV America, we prove it every day. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations on your marvelous achievement of the CPE. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ma Jing. Please join me now in welcoming Jessica Beinecke. She will tell us about how she uses social media to teach English, American culture, and slang to native Mandarin speakers. Hello everyone, I'm Jessica Beinecke. Hello everybody, my name is Jessica Beinecke Baijie. I am the creator, host, writer, and producer of OMG May, Voice of America's viral web series that uses Mandarin to teach American slang and culture to our young Chinese audience online. We teach uh, Mandarin speakers the most authentic and most uh, the most up to date uh, American culture and slang on the website of whom live in mainland China. And in two years, OMG has generated more than 40 million video views. OMG may you yo sister wan wang shang fen si by fenji yo shi wu ju zai zhong guo da lu. Liang nian lai shi pin liu lan liang chao guo si tian wan. So let's take a look at a mashup of OMG may you highlights in the US and China. Omi chai kan kan. Jiga OMG may you zai mei guo ha zhong guo de shi pin. Swag, 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 swag on you. If I was your boyfriend, never let you go. Hi, everybody. I'm holding a panda. Junjun. Happy birthday, OMG May. We are never, ever getting back together. We are never, ever, ever getting back together. Learned a song from OMG May, right? 
I very like her, Taylor Swift. We are never ever ever getting back together. We are never ever ever getting back together. We are never ever ever getting back together. Turkey is the staple of Thanksgiving dinner. Look at this turkey! Oh my gosh, it's roasted to perfection. Pumpkin pie. It's pumpkin pie! Pumpkin pie, pumpkin pie. Shake the presents. It snowed last night in Ohio, and it's gonna be a white Christmas today! Woohoo! That last part was my mom. She says hi. <laughs> uh, thank you all so much. Check us out on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Xinlang Weibo. Congratulations on your accomplishments with the CPE. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jessica. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in now welcoming Secretary of State John Kerry. Wow. I, uh, I don't know, I don't have an idea what a word she was saying, folks, <laughs> but it sounded great. I'm impressed. Very, very impressive. I saw a few of our friends up here in shock sitting there. Is that what they're teaching them? Is that what they're learning? <laughs> anyway, um, and Ma Jing, I absolutely promise to at least think twice before I speak or act, okay? <laughs> it's very, very good advice, I must say. Um, what a pleasure uh, to be here. Uh, Vice Premier Liu, we are really honored to have you here. Uh, and it's a pleasure to see all of you here. Thank you so much for coming to join us for this consultation on people-to-people -people exchanges. This really is where the action is. And I am excited by the energy and I'm excited by the discussion. Uh, Madam Leo and I spent a little extra time talking, and I hope you'll forgive us, but we really were uh, excited about the panoply of possibilities, the ways in which we can expand uh, these exchanges, which make all the difference in the world. I cannot tell you. I, as I am privileged to travel as secretary and go to so many different countries, and I meet finance ministers, environment ministers, prime ministers, foreign ministers, who proudly say, I was educated at Princeton, or I was educated at University of California, or I was educated somewhere in the United States, or in Great Britain, in Europe, or somewhere. But the, the pride that all of them have for that experience and the connection that they feel is absolutely invaluable in terms of breaking down barriers, building understanding, bringing countries together, avoiding conflicts, uniting our peoples, and doing all of the things that diplomacy is about. So I am really pleased to welcome Vice Premier Leo here uh, to continue this, and Vice Minister Howe, thank you very much for your leadership, and I'm delighted with our new and uh, energetic addition to our team here at the State Department with Assistant Secretary Evan Ryan and Assistant Secretary Danny Russell sitting here in the front seat. Uh, we have a great team, all of whom uh, care enormously about this particular program and more importantly about the region and about our ability to be able to uh, connect. I I've been to Asia many, many times throughout my life uh, and three times since I became Secretary of State. And every time that I visit the region, I really come home with a much deeper understanding of the people, the challenges that they face, uh, and especially the issues that matter to people individually. And as you saw in the video there, they really are the same. They're not that different. People aspiring to jobs, to education, to opportunity, to family, to absence of conflict and presence of security, 
stability, all of these things. Since Vice Premier Leo and Secretary Clinton launched this initiative in 2010, we have really worked hard, and we're going to continue to work hard in order to give more people the opportunity to be able to build their own understanding through people-to-people -people exchanges. There just isn't anything more valuable. And we got excited over lunch talking about, you know, the possibilities of kids from high schools in the middle part of America and farm country going and meeting farm folks in China, the middle part of the western part of China and so forth, and building these linkages. That's how we're going to solve problems, I guarantee you, uh, in the short run and the long run. And this annual forum has served as a powerful way to address challenges and to identify new ways for us to be able to enhance our engagement. For example, thanks to the Fulbright Foreign Language Teaching Assistant Program, which came out of last year's uh, CPE, students in the United States have been able to benefit from the skilled Chinese instructors like uh, uh, Chen Gu. Uh, or, uh, well, Chen really normally teaches at Hainan University, uh, the normal university in China, but he's currently serving as FLTA in my hometown of Boston, teaching Mandarin to students of Boston University. And Chen's here today, and if you ask him, he'll tell you how gratifying it is to teach American students not only his language, but just about life in China and about what they're thinking, and he and his contemporaries, and what they want out of life. He'll also tell you how much he is learning himself by being there. Uh, they say it takes an outsider to fully understand and comprehend the culture of a nation. Well, Chen has a master's degree now, I want you to know, in American studies. But if, as a result of being in Boston over this last period of time, he can now provide an explanation for the mania that is part of Red Sox Nation, then someone should give him a PhD immediately, folks, which he would have earned. The fact is that thanks to the CPE, American and Chinese citizens are learning from one another every single day. And astronomy students are, are coming together to discover new challenges and developments in both Western and Chinese space exploration. Playwrights are connecting virtually in order to stage theater performances and live stream them to cities in China and the United States simultaneously. American organizations like the Thomas Jefferson Foundation are planning exhibits in China and world-class athletes are acting as sports envoys to promote athletic inclusion and adaptation for young people with disabilities. Just this morning I was on uh, the Hill testifying before the uh, Senate Foreign Relations Committee on the Disabilities Treaty, which can help raise global standards of dealing with disabilities to the ADA standards that we have here in America. And it's a wonderful way to include people who might otherwise be uh, discriminated against or left on the sidelines of life. Our educational exchanges are truly more widespread than ever before. And if I'm able to encourage that, as I hope to, they will be even more widespread over the course of these next years. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of Chinese students and teachers like Chen are coming to American colleges and universities. And later today, Vice Premier Liu and I will speak about President Obama's 100,000 strong initiative and the foundation uh, of the same name, which is aimed at uh, sending 100,000 American students to study in China by the end of next year. President Obama uh, sent over a letter to express his support for the CPE, and in that letter he wrote, the Chinese and American peoples want a strong cooperative relationship, and it is in our interest to work together to meet the global challenges that we face. Both President Obama, President Xi, share a deep commitment to expanding the people-to-people -people exchanges between our countries. And that is because these exchanges give folks a chance to be able to have a deeper understanding of each other's way of life, and eventually that understanding can grow into trust. 
And trust, as we all know, grows into partnership and into a whole lot of benefits in the long run. 42 years ago, nine ping pong players, four officials, and two family members became the first Americans to set foot in China since the Cultural Revolution of 1949. Time magazine called the visit the ping heard around the world. But the truth is that Americans did a lot more than play ping pong when they were there. They spent time with Chinese students, with factory workers. They visited uh, treasured Chinese sites like the Great Wall and the Summer Palace. And they went to see the Canton Ballet. Their visit literally opened a new chapter in the history of United States and China relations. And it wasn't only because they played ping pong, it was through their visit to China that it became clear that despite the many differences between our peoples, differences that often politics and, and ideologues and sometimes even demagogues get in the way of, that, that there are also always a huge number of similarities and ways that we can bind people together. Ultimately, these exchanges can do a lot more than just bridge gaps between two different people. They can bring together the two largest polluters on Earth to help combat the serious challenge of climate change. They can bring together the two largest economies on Earth to help drive the shared prosperity that we want for all people. They can bring together two of the most powerful nations on Earth to promote peace, security, and stability in every corner of the globe. As President Obama put it in his letter, the world is looking to the United States and China to work together to solve pressing challenges. And there is great potential for athlete, cultural, and scientific exchanges to help solve problems for the benefit of all. By improving and expanding the ties between the people of our two countries, the CPE is providing critical gateways to important solutions. Well, the President and I and our counterparts in China know that enabling people in countries to come together in pursuit of those goals will lead not only to greater understanding, but eventually to an even stronger partnership between our two countries. The many collaborative people-to-people -people initiatives that come out of the CPE are a critical part of that process. They're as good as anything else that we do in form of diplomacy. And I look forward to building on that progress, on all of the progress that we've made, on using your ideas, your energy, your enthusiasm, your creativity. And together, if we continue to do this, this relationship will become one of the great relationships of all time and a game changer for the planet. That's our hope. Now it's my pleasure to introduce a woman who, as I learned at lunch, probably holds more portfolios in China than any other single person in charge of health, education, media, uh, what did I, uh, sports. I mean, you run the list, culture. Uh, it's quite extraordinary. And I'm really delighted to introduce her to you, the Vice Premier of China, Madam Liu. The Honorable Secretary of State John Kerry, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends. <laughs> I told you she was powerful. <laughs> it has been a great pleasure for me to co-chair the fourth round of China-U.S. high-level consultation on people-to-people -people exchange CPE with Secretary Kerry. Right now, the coordinators of both sides, Under Secretary Ryan and uh, Vice Education Minister Hao Ping, have made wonderful remarks. And I also want to thank Secretary Kerry for his important remarks. I believe that the Chinese President, Mr. Xi Jinping, attaches great importance to this consultation. 
and he has sent to us a message of congratulation, and I would like to read to you now. On the occasion of the conclusion of the fourth round of China-U.S. high-level consultation on people-to-people -people exchange, I would like to extend my warm congratulations. The China-U.S. relationship is one of the most important bilateral relations in this world. China is the world's biggest developing country, and the U.S. the biggest developed one. China and the U.S. are both permanent members of the UN Security Council. Our two countries face common challenges and shoulder important responsibilities in addressing a number of issues concerning world peace and development. To build between China and the United States a new model of major country relationship that features no conflict or confrontation, mutual respect and win-win cooperation, calls for active support and broad participation by the public and various social sectors in both countries. Over the years, the people-to-people -people exchange has played a positive role in enhancing China-U.S. relations and become an important pillar for the growth of the relations between our two countries. During the past three years in particular, nearly 100 outcomes under the CPE framework have been implemented, and this has enhanced the level of people-to-people -people exchange between our two countries and provided new impetus to the growth of China-U.S. relations. I hope the CPE mechanism will build on the past achievements and open up new prospects, expand areas of communication, deepen cooperation, and make new contribution to building the bridge of heart-to-heart -heart communication between the Chinese and American peoples and the development of the new model of major country relationship between China and the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, the messages of congratulations from President Xi Jinping and President Obama reflect the important agreement between our two presidents on deepening people-to-people -people exchange between our two countries. This will surely lend an important impetus to the building of the new model of major country relationship between China and the United States. The Secretary and I have just signed the Memorandum of Understanding on high-level consultation on people-to-people -people exchange. Our coordinators have briefed us on the outcomes of consultations in each field, and we have heard excellent ideas from youth representatives on how to build the new model of major country relationship and increase youth exchanges. I'm truly encouraged by what I've heard. I wish to congratulate you on the success of this round of consultation, and I thank both teams for their hard work, and Secretary Kerry and our American colleagues for their gracious hospitality and thoughtful arrangements. People-to-people -people exchange between China and America has a time-honored history. As early as over 200 years ago, the merchant ship Empress of China left New York Harbor for China, marking the beginning of China-U.S. friendly exchange. More than 70 years ago, the people of China and America fought shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder in the anti-fascist war and forged profound friendship. And about 1,500 American from the Flying Tigers have contributed their lives to this endeavor. Forty-two years ago, the ping-pong diplomacy, which attracted worldwide attention, reopened the once closed gate of China-U.S. exchange. In early 1979, Mr. Deng Xiaoping paid a visit to the United States. The moment when Deng tried on the cowboy hat at a rodeo in Simonton became a classic snapshot in the history of China-U.S. exchange. And 28 years ago, a party secretary from a Chinese county, who is now the president of China, Mr. Xi Jinping, visited the United States, and during his visit, he stayed with a local family for two nights in a small town in Iowa, where he developed friendship with local residents. During his visit to the United States last February, President Xi revisited 
the small town and had a get-together with his old friends by the fireplace, which is yet another wonderful story of the friendship between the Chinese leader and ordinary Americans. Just as small streams were joined together to become a large river, the heartfelt mutual affection and the growing friendly exchange between the Chinese and American peoples will push China-U.S. relations to break waves and surge ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, the establishment and development of the CPE is a major event in our people-to-people -people exchange and the history of our bilateral relations. Over the past three years and more, the CPE has made continued progress and implemented over 100 important outcomes in the six areas of education, science and technology, culture, sports, women and youth. The 100,000 strong initiative of the U.S. side has enabled 68,000 American students to study in China, and the three 10,000 projects of the Chinese side has in total sent nearly 10,000 people to the United States for PhD studies or joint PhD programs and invited over 10,000 Americans to China for visits or studies. The China-U.S. Cultural Forum and the China-U.S. High-Level Women Leaders Dialogue have all become famous events. The Chinese cultural series were very rece well received in the United States. Traditional Chinese sports such as wushu and house qigong have gradually entered local U.S. communities. The two sides have also made positive progress in breast cancer cooperation and promotion of clean cook stoves. It's fair to say that China-U.S. people-to-people -people exchange now enjoys a stronger foundation, greater substance, substance, wider coverage, more diverse participation, and stronger, far-reaching influence. China-U.S. relations now stand at a new historic starting point and face new opportunities of growth. At their two meetings held in Annenberg Estate and in St. Petersburg, President Xi and President Obama reached important agreement on building a new model of major country relationship between China and the United States. People-to-people -people exchange as one of the three pillars supporting the growth of China-U.S. relations plays an indispensable role and a strategic role in the building of this new model of major country relationship. Continued progress in people-to-people -people exchange can enable us to more effectively increase mutual understanding and trust and uphold mutual interests. In so doing, we will enable our public to better appreciate the spirit of mutual respect and win-win cooperation, thus laying a solid popular basis for the new model of major country relations between our two countries. We hope to work with the U.S. side to make the best use of this pioneering role of people-to-people -people exchange mechanism and comprehensively deepen and broaden such exchange. With this in mind, I wish to make three proposals. First, we need to seek common ground while reserving differences and further capitalize the bridge building role of mutual learning among various civilizations. Our world, rich and colorful as it is, has different civilizations. It is the beautiful leaves of different colors that make Washington DC in autumn so beautiful. There are no two identical leaves in the world. It's only natural that China and the United States, two major countries with different national conditions, histories, cultures, and systems, have differences with each other. The American people have the American dream, while the Chinese people have the Chinese dream. Despite our different choice of development paths, we have a lot in common as we all endeavor to pursue people's happiness, social harmony, economic prosperity, and world peace. People-to-people -people exchange is a solid bridge connecting China and the United States and they will lead us to our common bright future. We need to further increase interactions between cultural institutions, organizations and industries, learn from each other and draw upon each other's strength to seek commonality and harmony from diversity and difference and pursue development through interactions in a joint effort to promote progress of human civilizations. Second, we need to build trust 
dispel misgivings and further strengthen the catalytic effect of mutual trust between us. Former U.S. President Franklin Roosevelt has a famous saying that the only limit to our realization of tomorrow will be our doubts of today. Some of the differences and problems between China and the United States are, to a large extent, the result of lack of mutual understanding and trust. People-to-people -people exchange could gradually, yet steadily, bring the two peoples closer, increase their mutual trust, and remove prejudices and differences between them, so that bilateral relations between us will become more resilient and dynamic. To this end, we need to further encourage all forms of exchanges between people from all sectors and at all ages and ensure the success of the exchange between young political leaders, scientists, engineers and artists and the Youth RME Partnership Programme with a view to improving understanding of each other's national and social conditions. Third, we need to keep abreast of the times and open up new prospects of China-US people-to-people exchange. I am delighted to see that this meeting of the CPE is marked by three highlights. First, the theme activities of youth and innovation have been launched. The hope of sustainable development of China-US relations lies in the youth. Youth is the fresh force of the two countries and represents the bright future. I hope they will work together and enhance cooperation to co cope with the common challenges facing us and make fresh in contribution to world peace and progress. Second, think tank exchanges have been introduced. This afternoon, I will engage in interactions with American scholars from think tanks at the United States Institute of Peace. I hope Chinese and American scholars will carry out more joint research programs on such topics as how to build the new model of major country relationship and strengthen people-to-people -people exchange, providing intellectual support, policy recommendations and theoretical basis for China-US people-to-people -people exchange. Third, provincial state people-to-people -people exchange under the framework of the CPE have expanded in depth and breadth. We need to bring the priority of our work down to lower levels and fully leverage the role of the mechanism of sister provinces, states and cities so as to make people-to-people -people exchange closer to the society and people and ensure that people are truly involved and benefit from it. In this way, more and more people of our two countries will participate in and contribute to the exchange and share in its fruits. I believe the seas of friendship, trust and cooperation that we saw today will surely grow into a towering tree and yield bumper harvest. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, I am convinced that with the platform of the CPE, mutual understanding, trust and friendship between the two peoples will further build up and the giant ship of China-US relations will sail more steadily toward its great goal. I look forward to working with Secretary Kerry and everyone here to create an even brighter future of the China-US people-to-people -people exchange. And make our due contribution to the growth of China-US relations, to the well-being of the two peoples and world peace. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Kerry and Vice Premier Leo. And thank you all for being here with us today. We look forward to our continued work together throughout the year, and we look forward to CPE 2014 in Beijing. So please join me one last time in thanking all of our participants and guests here today. Thank you.